Some of your customers just don't buy. Why don't they buy? Well, one of the reasons could be friction. Today, we're going to talk about how to identify friction points in your sales process and how to eliminate them. And stick around to the end because we're going to give you some steps on how to accomplish that. Hi, welcome back to Blunt Force Business. I'm Brian LaFauci. And I'm Patrick Marino. And today, we're going to talk to you about being quick with your words and quick with the sales, and quick with everything. We're eliminating friction, make things easy for your clients. Um, let's jump right in and talk to them right away about our three blunt force facts about how you can eliminate friction points for your clients in the sales process. Great. And by talking like that, it adds <laughs> friction points. <laughs> blunt force fact number one, ask less, sell more. You want to take a lot of the effort out of your client's hands. Don't give them a lot of questions to answer. Give them a couple and get rolling. And blunt force fact number two, every second counts. <laughs> I like that you sped that up, man. Uh, yeah, so um, if you don't respond right away or if the website page doesn't load, you're going to lose people. So see how you can eliminate that and make it faster. And then blunt force fact number three, minimum choice. Maximum impact. <laughs> we have a much more animated Bump Forest fact this, very this week. Animated, yeah, very very yeah. good. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, we can't be the Cheesecake Factory. That menu is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Nobody, only the Cheesecake Factory can be the Cheesecake yeah, Factory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you, so fewer choices makes it easier for people so they don't get overwhelmed. Excuse me, sir, but your item is on page 76 that you want to find. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I don't really know how the Cheesecake Factory does it. You ever watch like um, one of those restaurants like uh, Gordon Ramsay or like any of those like kind of like yep. bar rescue or whatever it is? What the cheesecake they do this, everything is the same thing. This menu is too long. That's yeah. like one of the first things they do every right. single time. Right. They take the menu down, right? And they then they build it in like really, really quick. Like the one I page struggle menu. when it's like a one pager. You I'll struggle str when it's a one page I do, menu? I do, because I'll be like, ah, I'll flip it, be like, there's nothing on the back. I'll flip it again. Sure, there's nothing on the back. Well, and the, make a decision. The big, the other, I mentioned it on the podcast all the time, but when I became a homeowner versus like back when I was a kid, all I felt like there was a real shift, especially with the introduction of LEDs, the real shift in the, just the, the, the process of buying a light bulb. It was like, you know, like a light would go out. Lights don't go out as often anymore. Right. Right. Which That's is very like, true. It's which is true. Amazing. But like, I, I just remember the first time I had to buy a light bulb for something that wasn't just like the lamp. Mm -hmm. It was like something else. Mm -hmm. And you walk into like the aisle of light bulbs and mm -hmm. it is just a wall of them. Yeah, and you're like, immense. you know, this, how many different watt choices and then the brightness levels and, you know, LEDs versus non LEDs. I think that that's been eliminated a little bit now. Like the LEDs are supposedly like they last a lot longer. Oh my, it's amazing. Right? You're right. Yeah. I, I don't think the last time I haven't bought a light bulb in a while. Right. But you know, we but then did, you just want to walk away. It's right. like, Oh my God, I can't do this. I can't do it. To our point of today's conversation, we had, uh, we talked about this a bunch on our weekly call. Yeah. Which, if you want on our weekly call, go to bluntforcebusiness.com and check out our bold call if you are interested in joining some like minded people who are looking to grow. Um, I'll ask less and sell more. <laughs> but I did, you know, when we were on that, um, on that topic of selling on social, a lot of the stuff we we're talking about was related to removing these friction points and how, and we can all relate to times when we have to have. One extra step has caused us to just put it down and be like, oh, maybe I'll go back to that later. Whereas ease of you know, transaction, which Amazon does phenomenal, right? right. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, but ease of transaction, just, I, I've, you know, we've all bought stuff and been like, I can't believe I bought that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, get, was, what, did one, what was one thing you could think of that Amazon did specifically to increase their conversions. And so to it's the friction. buy, it's the buy right now yeah. button. Yeah. They, they made it a one click buy. It, and literally it just, whatever the last payment method yeah. you stored or your preferred payment method, last address, it, it sometimes it's wrong. Right. Cause if you have, a, if you do what I, my kids do, my kids, uh, who now live on their own, still use my Amazon account to order shit. And I can't tell you how many times I'm like, Hey, can you Venmo me the hundred bucks that you just, spent on my card yeah because you weren't paying attention yeah. right but you know because you just click the the 
buy it now button. But that's a perfect example of yes. how they probably saw something that had to, like, the, you know, we've all left things in our Amazon cart, mm -hmm. right? And then mm -hmm. forgotten about it. It's like, oh, yeah. And then you go back to buy something in Amazon, and you're like, what's in the cart? It's like something you put in there and you just yep. forgot about, right? Yep. So they've eliminated some of the friction by having the buy now button just make it easier. Like one, yeah. one click buy. Yeah. You know, boom, and it's done. Yeah, and I think for um, for our listeners, one of the ways, I, and I've had experience of this, in the service-based industry that we're in, where we're dealing with clients and we're trying to listen to them and we're trying to streamline. And there's been times where I'll hear, I won't hear the client correctly. And I won't ask the right leading question to just streamline the process. And the client might just say, hey, listen, I need this. And then I'll keep listening to them and I'll think, because my job is to help them, that all right, I can do more for you, right? That, that, and I'll be, and I, in my mind, I will go through the process of, well, what you're asking me for, yes, but that's not going to solve your problem. And I'll know that. And so then I'll take them down this rabbit hole and I'll present like this solution to them and I'll lose it sometimes because I didn't just hear the fact that what they wanted was do this for me right now and just do it. And if I just said, sure, no problem, here's the price, I'll do it. And instead I created this friction point by giving them this myriad of choices that I sent to them in what I think is a very well outlined proposal, but that's not what they wanted. They wanted the, you know, because we can't all be the Amazon, right? And and for a lot of our listeners, like if they're, they're running a business that might be very specific where they have to go out, price a job, like do, do this thing, it's almost impossible to be the, um, the product base. And if you are the product base, you need to do this, right? Like you got to find a way that it's click now, click now. We, we talk about my book as a bad example of, of where we fumbled a little bit with, because it isn't the a primary thing that we like that keeps the lights on in the house. Right. But even still, I'll go back to it sometimes and I'll think, all right, I need to do, I need to streamline this process and just make it way easier for people to, to purchase this when they want to, right. And put the little time and effort into it. But for those that are selling the product or service, yeah, you, you know, if that's your thing, it's got to be, it's got to be seamless. And luckily, there's te the technologies out there to do that. But a lot of us aren't in that space. The, your digital marketing company isn't really in that space, right? Well, just like in the, the business. The, go back to the business consulting uh, part. Like <clears throat> we've we the way that we've kind of launched what we're doing, right? With like we really only have one or two options to buy. Like it is the anti. Um, like what, what, you, what you're doing with one strategy, what you have all these different things you said, right? And you ended up going down the rabbit hole of all these potential solutions for the customer um, versus there being like packages of consulting. Here's package number one. Here's package and number two. And we have those two. Those two. I find three. I don't, yeah, I find right? that but sometimes like, I don't like, do that as much know, like, as I should. There's probably a ton of like, you know, if, if you're in the small business space and you've been looking for advice, you can easily sign up for one of these programs here, click right here, buy now, buy the program. Here's what you get, right? Those are probably way higher conversion rate than the consultative. Mm -hmm. Let me go through your business. Let me figure out what you actually need. Right. And then I'm going to figure, and then you ended up in this particular instance, choosing something that they didn't want. Right. Right. But these are, this is not like an either or, solution, problem, question, exercise, right? So this is not like a, this is better than that. This is really about whatever we decide to do, can we streamline it? So being consultative is a fine way. You don't have to have packages. It might be better. You might be better off in the long run doing it consultative, mm -hmm. right? And going through and providing a very thorough service. But you have to recognize the pitfalls, the potential pit pitfalls, right? right? You have to recognize where the friction could come do the best you can to eliminate some of the the times when you might lose a client. Simplify it as much as you possibly can without destroying your core service, mm -hmm. right? These are going to be things you're going to have to test and figure out, right? But you're going to work towards the ultimate goal of having it be the less friction as possible because A, it's going to improve your conversion rates. You're not going to lose as many people, but B, it's also going to make your customers happier. They're going to feel like they left positively. Right. The more complicated it is, the more difficult it is. Right. And you're probably better off with your business model not having package one, package two, because there's so much that you can do. Mm -hmm. Right. You're probably better off with the sales. But that might even actually raise questions about pricing, too. 
because it's consultative, maybe the price point's higher. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's not just an off the shelf, yeah. consulting package, sales funnel, whatever it is you're buying. You know, and to the point of every second counts, which I think is a great blunt force fact, there's times where what I've realized in my experience is the first phone call that I have with you is the one where I need to get you to commit. And whether it be, okay, you know, let's do this right now. The first, you know, 29 days I'm working with you are free. Cancel the credit card at any time. And no matter how much work I've done between now and then, you know, you won't be charged. Because when people walk away, they second guess every purchase. It's the reason why car dealers do what they do. Years and years and years of knowing that, oh, shit, you walk away, you're not coming back, right? And it won't be because we weren't better. It just, you'll go somewhere else and they'll just, make it a little easier or whatever. Right. Don't, don't walk away. Um, and, and I, you know, so the, the interesting thing is being able to like, how prepared are you in that first interaction to get them to give you that key thing, which is they're, they're checking, you know, a check, checking account number or credit card right there and say, if we start today, you know, let's get started. Why are we going to wait? And, in, and you know, you've waited this long. If we, if we go into contract today, your first whatever, however, two weeks are free. And you cancel at day 14, even though we've do, done work together, no charge, right? So it's just getting them to, to do that. It's easy to do in an online platform. It's harder to do what you have to have conscious effort to do it when you're doing like the face-to-face stuff. Right. Like here, here's how we do it. And here's how we, and then the, uh, the ask less, sell more is interesting because in, in it's, it's a little counterintuitive, right? Oh, I should be, I always ask, right? Cause you say, you know, never, never stop closing, right? Well, we'll I mean, always think, be closing, never ask. Yeah. I think the ask less is like, how much do you need up front in order to make the, the sale? Right. And the, the easy example is the online form. Yeah. Right. So it's like if you want to improve the conversion rate on an online form, you eliminate the number of questions they have to answer. So it's like name and email address. Your response rate is going to be pretty high. Name, email address, zip code. Still pretty high. Yeah. Name, email address, zip code. Last time you had service. Name, email address, yeah. zip code. Last time you had service, how did you find out about us? Last, you know, like, you know, what's the product you're interested in? The more questions you ask, the more likely you get drop offs, and it's just human nature. It's not counterintuitive. It's super intuitive. Yeah. Because while you're answering questions, what could happen? If you're in the online world, you're probably on what device? Your phone. You're on your phone, right? So what could happen while you're in the middle of you get a call. You get a call. Or a text message. You get a text convert, message. Yeah. You get an Instagram notification. Like, I mean, like, you know, like your phone is a, is a, is a zoo of distractions. As it is the zoo of distractions. Right? So it's like yeah. there's the million, the, the, the things that could happen on that while you're, or this happens to me all the time. Mm-hmm. I turn this way down this particular street in my neighborhood mm-hmm. and I drop internet service. Mm. Now let's say I'm in the middle of filling out a big, what I should be doing while I'm driving. Like, let's say I'm in the middle of doing something and I lose service, right? That knocks me out, right? Somebody, my kid takes my phone and throws it across the room, right? These are all things that are going to stop me from converting. And so right. the less you've asked, and it's just, and also just frustration and fatigue, right? It's like, I've gotten, you know, click next. And it's like, brings me to the next part of, this happens in job applications too, mm-hmm. right? It's like, it takes me to the next page of the job application. You're like, oh, I have more to fill out. They're losing a lot of those people. Now, the question could be, again, like it's not an either or, right? It's like, I may be better off knowing the zip code of like I'm a service-based business, knowing the zip code of the person because now I know, okay, well, they want an ASAP service in Dartmouth, Massachusetts. I'm going to be in Westport that day. I know I can handle it, right? Or they're going to be out in Western Mass and it's like, well, do I want to take right. it on, right? Right. If I know that ahead of time, that might eliminate time in my day and my planning. Yep. Right. Whereas if I don't get that information, now I have to follow up with them. And I'd wait and go get back and forth with them only to find out we can't do it. Right. So there is definitely a balance there, but you have to recognize 
that you are going to get less if you ask more, right? So the question is, it has to be, as we say all the time, intentional and well thought out, right? Right. If I'm going to, if I'm going to ask more questions, you know, again, like this happens all the time as well. I can just like a sales qualifying process. It's like, how much time does um, a mortgage broker, or a, you know, if you're selling a home or whatever it is, like how much time you want to uh, waste on somebody who has bad credit? You know, like, or if you're in a situation where the credit completely disqualifies the person, get that information as early as possible in the process so you don't waste your time. You know, so those are the questions you have to ask, but it needs to be intentional. It's like, okay, we want to eliminate the friction. We want to get the leads. We want to get people to buy. We want to. We don't want to get as much, you know, some, like if we're having people fill out a credit card form, like, do we need their home address and their first name? A lot of times we don't, right? We just, can we get card number, security code, zip, billing zip? If that's it, we're going to get higher conversions on that. Sale. Yeah. And can we get it after, yeah. right? Like what, the, what is the key thing that we want to grab is like, we, all right, yes, you're a client. Here's the card. Very easy, I find, after to say, hey, I'm just going to send you a couple forms that we just fill out, or, um, that we just need you to sign or fill out to uh, to get the ball rolling. They'll have them over to you today. Now they've already given you the credit card, and now they want things to move, so now they'll fill it out, right? They've already, now they're invested. So it's looking at that process and saying, it, it, you know, can we do it in an order where um, we're, we're eliminating the friction to get the sale, and then there's, you know, there's A, B, C. Like, imagine if you went for, to, for um, the it, car, buying a car or houses like this in a lot of ways, right? You, What do they do when you go buy a car? Well, they do all the, the fun, easy stuff. And blah, we got a deal? Great. Okay, cool. Um, be right back. <laughs> it's like, and they put the the Cheesecake Factory book in front yeah, of yeah, you. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. now you're signing. If you had to do that first, you'd be gone. Right. They wait till they got you, then you do this. Or it's like a lot of, it's usually like like a pre qualification process. You know, pre qualified, you're pre qualified. Right. It's because they want the initial information. So they think they're pretty confident. Yes. That they're going to have to, they're not going to have to, they're not going to lose you because you're not qualified. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, all that stuff is friction to to get through the sale. And, you know, I'm going to go back to, because everyone's mind, I think, goes to, oh, well, online, online, you know, quick, quick. Yes. And a lot of people aren't closing business in that space. So it's the capacity and the ease to get to the point where you're closing a sale with, uh, you know, without letting this drive, without saying, hey, all right, I'll be back next week. Don't give them a week to, to think about it, right? Don't give them that. And have things like you said, prepackaged that you know that you can fit them into. And then we can always design around that, right? But this is like the pre-packaged piece we have. We know in the you know in the back of our mind, we know like all right, I know I can price this in this range, and we'll we'll make money, and it'll work for us, and we can figure out the rest as we go forward. So it's um, yeah, and I've done it before. I've over I've seen an an opportunity that I really thought the client wanted, and I've gone through the route of presenting them that opportunity. Uh, and it's, it's led to it being too much for them where it was, it was more than they wanted too many choices. And then, uh, it's not what I need. I mentioned this on the call. Um, and this is important. Well, just to go back quickly to your quick, quick point is that I think you can learn if you are in a service-based business and you're not in the online selling business, mm-hmm. you can still learn from that Amazon strategy, right? Cause I think it's easy to learn from that. Okay. They made it easier for me to buy and I bought. Right. They, they, what can we do in our service based businesses as well? One of the things that happened to me is I had my initial version of my service agreement contract was pages and pages long. And I had two people in particular, like it was over the course of the same like six month period. One person did not do business with me because the contract was too long. I'm not going to read this. Like, literally, that's what they said. Mm -hmm. And then the other one ended up doing business with me, but it was like, we had, I had to walk them through it. And I simplified it to a page. The agreement's a page. Yep. Statement of work is a page. Yep. Boom, and it's done. I also eliminated, they don't have to sign it anymore, right? When they make payment, they have to click a box that says, I agree to the terms of the... Yes. Yeah. Right? That's so a really like, good way to do yeah, it. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, what can we do? Like when I send a contract 
to a client and I'm not using uh, software and software is a great way of solving a lot of these problems mm -hmm. is I'm sending them PDF link to the payment form. You know, how easy can I make it to you? You know, here's, and also steps, read the agreement, click this link when you're ready to go. Yep. And then you know, like whatever I've done, like it's always like, like, like even like I'm thinking like one of my services is local SEO. It's like, here is the process for mm -hmm. providing me access to your Google business profile account. And here is a video showing you how to do it. You know what I mean? It's like, how can we make it easy for the customer? And it does two things. It helps them do it quicker and it makes them happier, right? Than yep. them getting frustrated yep. with the process, right? It's like the more they have to go like, oh, I was on your website and I couldn't figure out how to find like what you do. All right, well, then we have a problem. Right? <laughs> we have a problem. It should be easy for them to figure it out. Right. Boom, like, you know, here, like I'm working with a company um, right now. They do uh, this is a wellness practice, but they do like a million things. They do Reiki, yoga, acupuncture, um, dog chiropractic, astrology readings. They do all these things. Do you do goat yoga? So I don't know if they do goat yoga. But the idea is like, you know, like what, what, what we're trying to do is we're trying to eliminate the friction for their potential customers. You come to the website, how quickly is it to you for you to find what you're looking for mm -hmm. and then book? So it's like, and then how can we decrease the clicks, right? That it takes for them to do that. You know what I mean? And if not, is there a phone number? I could call the phone number, boom, get you there. You know, all those different things are ways of consciously reducing the amount of friction, easing the stress on the customer and increasing the amount of people that actually go through the process. You know, we can do that. I think all of us can do that in our, in our, uh, whether we're service based or whether we're selling products, what can we do to make the process easier? Yep. Time's the killer. I, I, response I mean, time is a big one. Yeah. Time, time is the killer. There's a Harvard, uh, business, um, it's, a, it's fairly famous. It might be like 10 years old now, but it actually showed by statistics. Like here, I think I said in the, uh, in one of the bump force facts, it was like a seven to 10% drop off every step. Right. Yep. So, but it would show you like, if you don't respond to a customer inquiry, right. Whether it's online or whether they give you a call yep. in the next like 15 minutes, like your response rate is pretty high after a half hour, it drops after an hour, it drops. Then like all of a sudden it's a cliff. Like if you don't get back to the person within a certain amount of time, it's not just like a, you might not get them. It's like a, you probably are not going to get them anymore. Right. It's like your response time needs to be so quick, which is where some of these automated tools come in. Right. And so you can see this, if you interact with customers, we, we had a website chat mm -hmm. video way back in the day where it's like, you're interacting with a bot through the first process because you, what you don't want to have happen, as we talked about with this with the website chat, and I had this with a client, I mentioned it in that video, where if I interact with the chat and I don't get a response right mm -hmm. away, I'm gone. Yeah. You lost me right yeah. away. Yeah, we talked about this. Don't too. have the chat box right. if you're not going to respond right away. Yep. And how can you respond right away? Either you have a notification on your phone where yep. you get it and you get back to them right away, or it's a bot. Yeah. Set up some automated yeah. tools. Which is the way everyone's going now, yeah. really, for the most part. That chat is just something that directs you, directs you, directs you, and then finds your lane. And then eventually, if they can't give you what you need, it's it's getting you to a email or a phone call. Yeah. So if you yeah. can't figure out how to get back to people quickly, mm -hmm. you're going to lose. So like th that's where you have to make this. Okay, so this affects all sorts of decisions. Like, am I going to be spending on marketing? like on ads, if I can't invest in the response. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if it's just me and I'm just a plumber, right? And we're advertising our plumbing services and every five people who call can't get me because I'm on a job, then I've wasted all that money. Right. You know, so like I have to make a determination if I'm going to, as part of my process here, um, if I'm going to pay for marketing or if I'm going to invest in something, whatever it is, I have to invest in the whole, all aspects of it. Like, so if I can't get back to them, I think you looked in the call centers, right? Maybe yeah, there's a we, call center. Yeah, we went with one. Yeah, exactly. Maybe mm -hmm. there's a call center who answers the calls yep. when I'm not around. Like lawyers do this all the time, right? Because lawyers are in and out of courtrooms and they're dealing with way too many clients, but you don't generally speak to the lawyer. Yeah. Right? You you fill out the form and you, I mean, they respond right away, but as a call service. Yep. Right? And yep. they're, they're answering maybe a, 
a simple question and then they're saying, okay, I'm going to get the lawyer to get back in touch with you when you can. Right. So like, that's like the whole, you know, all this is what was the friction? Well, the friction was lack of response time. Mm -hmm. What's the solution? Call center, automated bots, you know, auto responses to emails, right? If you have a form that you have on your website and people fill it out and say like, I'm interested, you've got to have some sort of automated response and maybe even a sequence of responses, right? And that's how one of the ways you can, you can solve some of the, um, you can solve some of this qualifying process that you know you have to go through, right? Where it's like, you know that if you give them a big long form to fill out on the front end, they're not gonna fill it out. They're gonna drop off because they get distracted, intimidated by the form length, or whatever it is. So maybe the first one is just name, email, boom. Now right. when they're in the system, right. they get the first automated email saying, hey, thank you so much for your interest. You're going to get another couple emails here, you know, answer quickly, and we'll, you know, like whatever it is. And so now the, the, you've got them on, a, on, a, on, a, on an automated system to kind of qualify them. Yeah, a little drip. Exactly. But, yeah. but your conversion on the front side mm -hmm. was really good. You're getting the right. high conversions. People are filling out that form. You've got leads, right? Because you didn't ask that much at the front, right? So that eliminated some of that friction there. Yeah, yeah. It's a, I, I, I think we know most of us know to do a lot of these things. It's now the the reality is looking at the looking at that broad spectrum of how and where we're interacting with our clients, and are are we hitting that in all the areas? I think where people probably are hitting fairly well right now is they are they are conscious of the fact that you know online stuff needs to be painless if well, possible. I don't think they're that conscious. Okay, but if but they, what, what's your experience but even those, with local business owners? E, but even those that you are, do a lot of consultations, open ended, right? Mm -hmm. You look at their stuff. Mm -hmm. How many of them you think have this shit together? Yeah, no, you're right, not a lot. But even those that do, they'll have some of it dialed in, right? And then the other pieces of it, there's still like these inhibiting pain points. Right. And the, and it's a matter of, it's, it's constant process improvement. We yeah. can always add, we can always do something that, like you said, allows each, each point to, of the, you know, the process to be a little less painful. And so we, sometimes with the online stuff, we don't know what we're losing. With the in-person stuff, we do. Right. Well, I think right, that we can assess that better. So let's start off with some solutions. Okay. Right. Let's go through it. Right. And so the first step is just actually identifying, right. And look, looking at it, right. Look at your process and try and figure out where you lose people. Mm -hmm. The easy way to do this is Google analytics. If you have a website, you can see here's the number of people who came on. Here's the number where of people converted and what pages did they visit. So you can see that easy. It's a little bit harder um, when you have a service-based business. But there's kind of like here where you're service-based and here where you're high-level e-com. And then you've got this middle where like one of the things I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast before, but I definitely mentioned this in the call. When I was working with a, a pretty high-volume e-com company, we did customer survey, an in-person customer survey. Mm -hmm. And we actually videoed them going through their process in their head, thinking through what, what they were doing. And we found a couple of points where they tripped up. One of them was our search wasn't very good, right? They were looking for a specific ingredient. They used it. It brought up a whole bunch of products that didn't have their ingredients. So we figured out, oh, we have to fix the search. You know, another thing we figured out during that was when they went to shipping, they, they first of all, they, they packed their cart to get to the free shipping, which was another, oh, right? It should have been obvious, but mm -hmm. it was also like a reaffirmment that, okay, if we play around with that, we can increase our sales as well. But like we had like six different shipping options and they just didn't care about any of them. They wanted either, you know, it's either overnight or ground and that's all you need. Right. And by having too many shipping options, we might've lost that person too. Right. But like what you're doing is you have to take the step to analyze that. And so how do you do it? You either use analytics or you use some interviewing. Right. Right. You can talk to your customers. Right. And you get these surveys. Yeah. And you can ask them just, right. you can just ask them like, all right, where, what about this didn't work for you? Yeah. What about, you know, and, um, and those are tough conversations to have, but you know, it seems like you're not comfortable with this. Right. What, or just ask on? your, ask a friend. I mean, if, we, we talk all the time that friends and family aren't great, but sometimes they are great. It was just like, 
you know, go to my website and figure out something. They're like, oh, what am I trying to figure out? Like, it should be easy. Right. Right. It should be easy. Click the call, make an appointment or whatever it is. Like, it should, that should be easy. Mm-hmm. You know, so like that's important. Um, and then what you're going to be doing with the, with all that anal- analysis that you do is you're going to see, okay, what steps can I do to simplify this process? You know, how can I make it simpler? Click the call is a big one on a website. Yep. Right. Instead of making them write down the phone number or remember the phone number, mm-hmm. click a button and they call. Having a website chat, that doesn't suck. Right, which I think was the name of the video. Mm-hmm. Right, that's an easy way to get people to interact with you. Right, um, have people answer the phones. Right, if you're not going to have an online presence, if you're going to be more, you know, they've got to call you to make an appointment or whatever it is. Have somebody answer the phone. Yeah. Right. Right. Have them have the questions ready to go so that they can ask. You know, like these are things that you're going to have to do with your process to make it simpler for people to buy. Um, have different. Like, like in my case, send them the payment link. How do I pay? Click on this link and you pay. Have, um, have, we say simple, uh, we say eliminate options, but I think having a lot of options for payment as much as you can Mm -hmm. is good because that, you know, that allows people like, if I want to pay by credit card, I can pay by credit card. If I want to pay by check, I'll pay by check. It might not be great for you. Like for me, I don't like it when people pay by check, but like I have that option. You know, and that's, I'm not going to lose somebody, right? Or I'm not going to, you, you, if you're cash only, you're going to lose people, right? People are going to walk out. Right. Right. So like, even like the little ice cream, all my little local ice cream stands, they now all have tap to pay. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But like it was up until recently, right? They were all yeah. cash only, you know, and I, there's all sorts of reasons for that, but you're going to lose people. There's a pizza uh, place up in, uh, it's, uh, near, near Needham, um, I forget the name of the town. Anyways, it's up near South Boston. And it is all there it is always packed. It's a big place. I mean, I'm talking for a pizza place, it's a <coughs> big, big restaurant. It's it's probably got 40, 50, uh, maybe even more. Maybe maybe more than 50 tables. I mean, there's at booths, you know? And they pack it. Um, and they're cash only. And from like a business standpoint, I'm like, oh, what a pain in the ass. But I still go. Like they have, they have the reputation. Like sometimes, if you have a reputation, you can get away with that, and people like, they're not going. There's a tipping there. point too. Like if you're a business, you're going to have an that, ATM there. Yeah, you're you know? going to make a determination at some point. Like, yeah, we're better off going with credit cards. Yep. Yeah. You know, at some point, you're going to make that decision. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but like if, you, if, it, if it ain't broke. And you're making all the money mm-hmm. you have, you know, like I would think that handling a lot of cash probably is harder now. Like I don't handle a lot of cash, but yeah. probably banks are probably making it harder. Like cause banks don't want to deal with a lot mm-hmm. of cash anymore mm-hmm. either, you know? So, um, but simplifying that process is important. Optimize the response times, which we talked about. Yep. You know I mean, like, you know, like if we're not answering the phone, what do we do? We either dial back on marketing, but if we need the business, we have to figure out how do we answer the phone? How do we get back to people quicker? What can we use that's um, either a call, you know, if you're a big, if you're call related, do you have a call center? And you found a couple of relatively yeah, we, yeah, expen- yep. inexpensive options, right? Yep. Yep. Um, we're using Answer First right now, that, and we're very, very happy with them. I, you know, we, uh, we don't get a lot of, uh, by a lot of calls. It's not like the phone rings every five minutes, but uh, we were missing calls that was happening and that was a problem. And so we went with a call system. It's been great. It's been great. We don't miss. We don't I mean, I've had to work. Miss call. I've had to work with clients on just answering emails because like they didn't see it. It's like, oh, I didn't like, here's the five leads you just got, mm-hmm. you know, like, what did you do with them? Right. Oh, you got leads? Oh, like they're coming in. Yeah, you've got to you've got to have response. You've got to respond to the people. Otherwise, you're gonna lose them. Yeah, and you've got to try how how quickly can I get back? What are the expectations of my client? They usually get back within. I mean, you think about like um, a lot of service based like home services companies would use like those thumbtacks or Home Advisor or yep. Angie's List or whatever it is. I mean, those things are like if you don't respond immediately, yes, you are not getting that business, right? Because right. they're putting it out to like five or six businesses. Yeah, the first one that answers, boom, gets it and it's done. Like if I needed, I, I can't remember the last time I did this. But it was probably like power washing. In the side of my house, power washed. I reached out to five companies. The first one that got back to me got the business. Of course, you know. So yeah. it's like. Right. If you're not getting yeah, sales, you just want it to be checked off the list. Exactly. Yeah. If you're not getting sales, how can you 
optimize that response time. We got to get back to people quicker. And that's one of the things that I've had, I do myself as well. Like if I get an email, I don't wait, right? Definitely not 24 hours. Right, right. Like just get back to them and say like, hey, you know what I mean? Or I have an autoresponder. Yep. That's you know, where automated tools come in and that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's good. Want to wrap? Yeah, we can definitely wrap. Very good. Three blunt force facts to reducing friction in your business. Ask less, sell more. Every second counts. Don't make people wait and minimize choice. Minimize choice. Maximum impact. Good, good stuff job, good today. Job. <laughs> good stuff. I'm Brian LaFauji. Patrick Marino. Until next time. Thank you. 